In an effort to address the fundamentals of initiating trading, one significant consideration is determining what you intend to trade. Options, stocks, futures, forex, CFDs, commodities, etc. Your location may also impact your options. For instance, trading CFDs is not allowed in the US. For a comprehensive understanding, it's advisable to research the benefits and drawbacks of each instrument independently. A good resource for this is Investopedia.com where you can find detailed information on various trading instruments. I often suggest starting with stock shares, particularly for those in the US, given the vast and highly liquid stock market conducive to day trading. Once you decide on what to trade, the next step is selecting a trading platform and a broker. The broker serves as the intermediary between you and the exchange, where you'll eventually deposit your funds. The platform is the software for charting and executing trades. Some brokers provide their platforms. For example, TD Ameritrade offers Thinker's Whim, Interactive Brokers has Trader Workstation, TradeStation provides its platform, and NinjaTrader has its own. It's essential to note that certain platforms and brokers are better suited for specific types of trading. For instance, Thinkor's Whim is excellent for stocks and options, but TD Ameritrade's fees for futures are comparatively high. Starting with stocks is often recommended due to their simplicity compared to leveraged instruments like futures. Futures trading involves using a fraction of the contract's value, and the brokerage covers the remainder. Every brokerage has margin requirements, representing the minimum amount needed in your account to initiate a trade. Falling below this minimum results in trade liquidation and potential fees, adding a layer of complexity to the process. If you're determined to trade futures, it's crucial to be aware of your broker's margin requirements and ensure that your account has a sufficient cushion to prevent liquidation. Many countries impose strict regulations on brokers, making it advisable to opt for regulated brokers rather than unregulated ones. Regulated brokers are held to certain standards that provide consumer protection. Now the question arises, how much money should you start with? Ideally, the minimum amount, as it's recommended to practice on a demo account, before venturing into live trading with real money. Fortunately, most brokers offer simulation accounts for paper trading. You may only need to allocate a small monthly sum, typically $3 to $6, for live data to ensure real-time information for your practice. Some brokerages even provide free paper trading if you maintain a real money account with them. However, starting with a few hundred or a thousand dollars and trading live increases the risk of initial losses. The key is to trade without financial consequences until you feel confident in your understanding of trading mechanics on your chosen platform and have a profitable strategy in place. When transitioning to live trading, it's advisable to only use funds you are comfortable losing. Live trading differs significantly from paper trading because emotions come into play when real money is at stake. One of the initial challenges for a new trader is discovering a winning strategy or system that aligns with their preferred trading style, whether it involves supply and demand, ICT, MACD, or EMA. It's crucial to find a strategy that resonates with your trading style and to backtest it, as I'll explain shortly. While the temptation to abandon a strategy due to initial lack of results may be strong, sticking with a profitable strategy and backtesting is recommended. Constantly switching between strategies prolongs the learning process. Backtesting entails applying a strategy to historical data, providing validation, establishing expected win rates, and fostering trust in the chosen strategy. Therefore, when you observe a trading opportunity unfold in real time, you have the option to act on it. While some platforms offer automated backtesting, allowing you to input a strategy for simulated trades and automatic results, I personally prefer manual backtesting. Platforms like TradingView, Thinkor's Whim, or MotiveWave provide replay modes, 
allowing me to review the past 30 days or so, play through each trading day, mark potential trades, and record the outcomes in a spreadsheet. For those seeking a starting point, I've discovered a reliable, free backtesting spreadsheet, which I'll provide a link to below. Following successful backtesting, the next step is forward testing the strategy in real time on a demo account over several weeks. This helps ensure that the strategy can be executed correctly and is effective in current market conditions. I recommend having a minimum of one to three months of successful forward testing on a demo account before considering live trading with real money. The mental aspect of trading is often the most challenging, and for those interested in improving their trading psychology, I suggest reading books such as Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas, The Mental Game of Trading by Jared Tendler, and The Daily Trading Coach by Brett Steenbarger. For a broader understanding of the markets, valuable insights can be gained from more experienced traders through YouTube videos. While these videos may be less flashy and longer, the wealth of knowledge they offer makes them worthwhile for overall market analysis. I particularly recommend the One Option YouTube channel. When it comes to courses, I advise learning as much as possible for free before considering paid options. If you're interested in more details on this subject, I've created a video that delves into it, and the link is provided below. To summarize, the key steps to start trading include identifying what you want to trade, finding a suitable broker and platform, developing a strategy, back testing the strategy, forward testing on a demo account, and only considering live trading with real money after successful practice. It's crucial to approach live trading with funds you're comfortable losing due to the inherent difficulty and risk involved in trading. If you're interested in watching live trading sessions during the morning New York session, feel free to visit my channel on weekdays. That concludes this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.